M0FXP, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe uh, to my channel if you're finding my videos helpful and hit the like button. So, here we are, we're on the Yaesu FTDX10 which has very recently brought out a new firmware upgrade on the 27th of December 2021. So I think this is quite handy for owners of this radio and it's, and it's a very nice radio. So here's the firmware here, I'll put the link in the description and we can click it just so you can see the files downloading. There you are, and we'll have a look at them in a second. So, uh, what have they added? Let's have a look. Uh, it says here, the main change is the time that you can select a band or mode by touch operation on the selection screen displayed on the display by pressing the band key or mode key has been extended. When the number of registered QMB or quick memory bank is set to five channels when the power is turned off and the power is turned on again in the state of operation in quick mode band bank mode it rarely starts up normally fix the bug other operational functions have been improved and optimized so there you go we shall um, put all the links for the downloading the firmware in the description it looks like it's it's worth having the latest one. So let's have a quick look here. I've no, I have not got a Yesu FTDX10, so we'll have a quick look at the manual and how you actually do this. And I'm just reading it really. Um, so SD card preparation. To update firmware format, initialize the SD card in advance on the FTDX10 for information about the SD card that can be used and how to format it referred to using the SD card described in the operator manual. How to confirm the version, so look up what version you've got. Press function knob and then touch extension settings. Number two, the version of each firmware will be displayed on the TFT screen. As you can see here, you've got all these different version numbers. If we go back here, you can see here the different versions main, display, DSP, SDR, and AF. These are the numbers that you're going to want after the firmware has been updated. Downloading the firmware, you can see we've got the zip here. And like I said, I haven't actually done this uh, or got to the radio, but look, you've got main, DSP, display, there's one here that says CPU. So quite quite a lot of info there, isn't it? I mean, it's quite a radio, isn't it? Um, so download the firmware, unzip the file. Using a PC with Windows operating system, right-click download it. So you'll end up with this. Extra oh, extract it all to a file somewhere where you're going to find it. Call the file FTDX10. <coughs> the firmware file extension is an SFL is in the FTDX10 firmware update folder that is generated at the time of extraction. So you end up with folders that look like this. Copy the firmware to an SD card that is previously formatted. So yeah, make sure you remember to format your SD card successfully first. Note, copy the file directly under the FTDX10 folder. Do not copy it into that capture memory list or menu folder. So you basically drag it underneath here so you'll see the folders on your pc and drag it and just plonk it underneath there um, the folder configuration in the sd card formatted with the ftdx10 is shown below okay so yeah, hopefully you've got a, you've got an idea on that right uh, let's have a next bit so copy the firmware file to location so yeah you can see here where they how they've done it so just copy this how to update the firmware. The transceiver needs all settings to be reset immediately after updating the firmware. Resetting the transceiver will clear all memories and the setting data of the setting menu. Before updating the firmware, it is recommended to back up the memory data saved in the memory channels and the settings data of the settings menu. Refer to saving memory data and setting menu data described in the operation manual for the backup method. So basically look up in your manual how to back up all your memories and things so you don't lose them when you do the upgrade because if you forget that you will lose everything. 
So turn off the S, the transceiver off, insert the SD card written with the firmware. So we've done the above and we've put the SD card here. It's a bit like the 7300, I suppose. Turn on the transceiver, press the function key, and then touch extension settings. So where's the function key on this? Oh, here's function, then extension settings. Touch SD card and then touch done. So tap SD card, so it's extension, SD card, then firmware update, and then done. It looks quite good. You've got all the firmwares showing there. Hopefully your, your radio will see the firmware correctly installed on your SD card. Click update. Firmware to be updated. If the firmware is newer than the firmware in the transceiver and is not marked, tick touch the tick box and mark tick. Updatable file, the same version as the firmware in the transceiver is also displayed when update is not necessary. Broken file. File is correct for some reason. Download the firmware, so you can have some errors come through if you if it's not correct. Touch update. Can to cancel the update. Touch cancel. But yeah, okay. The confirmation screen for executing the update will be displayed. Touch OK to update the firmware to cancel this update. Click cancel. So this is very very similar to the 7300. Much more straightforward than the FTM 300 and the FTM 400 and other radios. The update progress indicator is displayed when the firmware transfer begins please wait until the process has been completed do not receive sorry do not remove the sd card or turn off the transceiver while updating if the update is interrupted the radio will not operate properly so that's quite important basically good you know plug it in somewhere reliable and um just don't touch anything <laughs> When the update is completed, the power is automatically turned off. So it will go off when you've finished and then back on. So then now you need to reset. So you go press function, uh, extension, but this time touch reset and then touch done of the all reset. A confirmation screen for reset execution is displayed. Touch OK. The power is turned off once and then turned on again. The completed firmware is done. If an error is displayed during the update, touch the screen to automatically turn the power off to on to return to the normal operation. So that's good. Yeah, so at the end there, you're going to go to this screen, I think. And you're going to go function, extension, and then this time reset. Um, so yeah, well, good luck with that. Let me know uh, what you think. I mean, it's a great radio. I've got the 7300, the 705. Um, now the... Zygu X6100. So I'm going to put all these links in for you. If I can find them again. Uh, there they are. Yesu. And uh, yeah, if you, if you find this helpful, please subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you on air. 7-3, all the best.